All right. Welcome. Uh, just about to make it through the week together, aren't we? Yeah, one more day. Well, listen, uh, if I had a nickel for every time the border came up on this show, I'd be independently wealthy living on some beach somewhere. Um, some GOP lawmakers and candidates are suggesting deploying the military to try and combat the cartels. And, of course, the people that are saying, oh, no way, we can't do that. Any action without cooperation would be considered an act of war. And the supporters come back and say, well, operations would be directed directly against the cartels, not the country of Mexico. Um, as I look at this, I think to myself, okay, we have sued our own government, the United States uh, federal government, over 32 times is last count. Um, and in some of those cases, we got favorable rulings from the courts, but the federal government simply ignored the ruling and went ahead and did what they wanted to do, which was in some cases allowing a quarter of a million people into the country in a four-week period. Um, so the Republicans' new border plan send the military into Mexico. Um, I thought the best person I could talk to, an old friend um, on the West Coast, retired Lieutenant Colonel Tony Schaefer, President Project Sentinel and London Center for Policy Research. Um, thank you so much for being with me. I appreciate it. Hey, Rick, I always enjoy joining you and uh, our conversations. Thanks for having me. Um, I, I really respect a lot um, the way you strategize and, and you sort of put things out there the way they are, not necessarily the way people would like them to be. Um, is this even feasible? We contemplated this very issue back in 19, uh, 1995, 96, because surprisingly enough, Rick, some of us saw this coming. I actually, uh, my, my second book, uh, uh, The Last Line, is about this very issue. And yes, it can be done. Anybody who has a basic understanding of the current uh, set of laws we work under as a federal government, there's a way of essentially bifurcating authorities to make this possible first. To secure the border, you can use, uh, a, 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 I'll use the term, a conspiracy of the willing, get governors together to use Title 32, which is the authorities for the National Guard. The bonus of doing that, Rick, is they can actually directly augment without violating posse comitatus, posse, posse, posse comitatus being the law that the federal military, the Army, Navy, Marine Corps, Air Force, cannot uh, engage in domestic operations. You bypass that legally by the fact you're doing it under the authorities of the states. This is a very important factor, one that we've proposed before. So DeSantis, uh, your governor there, a handful of others could literally put together a, a, a proper task force to do what you're talking about. And they would directly augment the authorities by the fact they would actually be working under law enforcement authorities uh, to augment uh, uh, CBP. Secondly, yes. Before we move on, let me ask you, what type of cooperation under uh, that Title 32 would we need to receive from the country of Mexico, if any? None. Zero. Not a thing. Wow. As a matter of fact, I would, I would keep them completely out of it. Uh, and the second, this goes to my second point, Mexico. I'm sorry, Rick, I would treat Mexico as a hostile country, uh, at least not, not one engaged in operations against us, but you can never tell what part of the government of Mexico has been corrupted or suborned by the cartel. So you just have to accept that as your, your fundamental premise. And you would then use, and this is what we had specifically proposed back in the 90s, uh, to basically do what we call intelligence preparation of the battle space. We would identify centers of gravity, uh, key uh, terrain, key organizations, key leaders, and begin working towards uh, dismantling them uh, handily. We did this in the 90s. Uh, against uh, the, the Medellin and Carly cartel, Carly cartels, successful in, in, in Colombia. We would simply use the same format and uh, methodology we used then. Uh, there's a book out, uh, Mark Bowden, uh, who wrote uh, Black Hawk Down. He also wrote, wrote a book called Killing Pablo, which explored uh, uh, some of the, the finer, more effective special operations that were used in this regard. So 
a combination of Title X, which is what I was just referring to with the military authorities, to go into Mexico to do military things, federally authorized and approved things, which you cannot do in the United States, and then you would use Title 32 with the guard elements to secure the border. This is legally sound. It could be done rapidly. Uh, if it was done with the proper uh, uh, authorities uh, and proper uh, people who understand what to do, uh, and then with political will, this could be you could secure the border within six months and you could per- completely uh, shut down uh, 90 percent of the cartel's operations within a year. It, it, but you'd have to have the political will to do it. Uh, see, and that leads me, um, talking to retired Lieutenant Colonel Tony Schaefer, uh, leads me to my next question. Um, sure. You know, I've talked to Ken Paxton a um, hundred times. And, he, of course, he, uh, the state attorney general, uh, filing these lawsuits on behalf of the state of Texas. Um, and, of course, now he's in a in an impeachment situation. But um, why has this not been done already? We've got a good governor and the Governor Abbott. DeSantis seems, uh, you know, he's totally dedicated for the sovereignty and sanctity of the nation. Why has this not been done? Political will. Uh, I, I look, I've briefed uh, Representative DeSantis on this concept back when we I was working with the, uh, the Freedom Caucus. It's one of their military advisors. And I, I think that many folks recognize, and I would, I would challenge anybody uh, to uh, come after me regarding my legal theory. So I know this could be done. It's been done. The question becomes, Rick, political will. You know, as I I look at this, you know, that's the same. People ask me all the time, why why is our southern border wide open? Because there's no political will to close it. Um, And on many different levels. And, you know, I always thought maybe that was a trite response, but it's not. Uh, no. you, you, there's no political will uh, to to have a southern border, much less maintain one. Well, that's my issue. Uh, again, Rick, this goes back to the '90s, and it's, it, it, you might be surprised. We were ready to do the operation I mentioned regarding Mexico because we had had significant success in dismantling the the uh, Medellin and Cali cartels. They were. Under something called the uh, the uh, project, uh, the linear project, we cooperated. We, the military, cooperated with multiple elements of the federal government, law enforcement, to do those things necessary to shut down the cartel. Was it? And, and that includes lethal operations. If you read Killing Pablo, there's a great deal of controversy over the potential. I'm not saying we did it or didn't do it. The potential that uh, one of our special mission units actually conducted an assassination of uh, Pablo Escobar. I'm not saying we did. I'm not saying we didn't. I'm just saying that whatever we did do was successful. And we had the political will to do that. So, uh, again, we know how to do this. Uh, the people that shut us down in Mexico back in the 90s, believe it or not, was the the, the, the uh, Drug, Drug, Drug Enforcement Administration, DEA. They felt that, oh, we were going to interfere with their operations. Well, maybe their operations should have been interfered with based on the results we've seen over the past uh, almost 30 years. Yeah. Now that's, uh, I'm talking with retired Lieutenant Colonel Tony Schaefer, president of Project Sentinel in the London Center for Policy Research. Um, the Republicans have come up with a new border. Well, it's not really new, um, but uh, maybe they've, just to say they've unveiled it again, they want to send the military into Mexico. Some GOP candidates and lawmakers want to well, they want to use the U.S. military to battle the drug cartels directly. And you just heard uh, uh, retired Lieutenant Colonel Tony Schaefer say, yeah, it's doable um, at the risk redundant. of being <laughs> at the risk of being a little bit redundant. I got to step aside for a second. But when we come back, let's again, because I know people are hanging on your every word. Let's again, very briefly tell them how and why. Um, this can happen and what they can do to have their voice heard. And welcome the Rick Roberts show with you every day, Monday through Friday from two to five, your afternoon drive in the DFW area. As we broadcast to the whole of Texas, 
Coast to Coast via the app, talking with retired Lieutenant Colonel Tony Schaefer, president of Project Sentinel and London Center for Policy Research, at the risk of being a bit redundant. I've asked uh, uh, retired Lieutenant Colonel Schaefer to very briefly walk us through this again, why this can be done. What am I talking about? Well, the Republicans have a new border plan. They want to send the military into Mexico to deal with the drug cartels one-on-one. Um, so that's the first question. The second question, um, we both agree, my guest and myself, there's no political will to <laughs> shut down the border or even acknowledge there is a border. Where do we get the political will? How do American voices, um, how can they be heard in such numbers that maybe they can be the genesis for some of this political will? Um, Lieutenant Colonel Schaefer, what do you say? So let's start with the second uh, question first. Uh, I actually, uh, excuse my being so uh, direct, I actually listened to NPR yesterday driving around, and one of the folks from El Paso, a very liberal gay uh, member of the city council, was bemoaning the fact that there's no way they, their community, as, as democratic and liberal as they are, can continue to absorb the unmitigated uh, uh, immigration. So many in, in, on the Democrat side are recognizing what a bad idea this is, too. So the first thing you got to do is reach out to the Democrats who actually understand the danger of what's going on. And I think a coalition uh, of, of blue dog Democrats, practical Democrats, and we who have been saying this for years need to come together to push for the political will. The political will, I think, is there if people uh, have the ability to reach out and organize people. And I think it's to the point even the Folks on the left recognize, uh, heck, uh, unions understand that uh, the, the more uh, cheap labor you bring in, the, the, the more you devalue the, the, the hourly wages of workers. So just figure out a way to com- combine uh, the forces of the left who understand the danger with the forces of the right. Secondly, going back to the practical path, uh, using legal authorities we successfully employed in the 90s to, to literally – defeat the Medellin and, and Cali cartels in, uh, in Cartagena, uh, in, in Colombia, we can do again. Uh, as a matter of fact, I know a lot of the folks who were engaged in that are still around. Uh, they're old like me. I mean, they're all in their 60s and 70s now, but we would do it. We could easily do it again. And it would be a combination of National Guard using Title 32 within their, the scope of their authorities to, to work at the state level with the governors, and uh, Title X, using traditional military authorities to engage directly in uh, going after the drug cartels like we did, the drug uh, mafias we did during the 90s. It's all been done before. Rick, it's just a matter of putting it all together and focusing it on the southwest border instead of Columbia. You know, it, uh, when you lay it out that way, it seems so simple. Yet, you know, when you come in here and sit behind a microphone every day, every week, every month, year after year after year, and nothing changes, you have to wonder why. Right. And you do, and I do, because I'm, you know, been a practical practitioner of intelligence and military operations for my entire career. And I still ask that question, why we don't use the methodology, the legal methodologies we have, and we've done successfully other places, in our very backyard. And that, again, that was uh, the pr- purpose of my book, The Last Lie, to kind of highlight that fact. Well, uh, let me uh, finally, because we're totally out of time. Uh, have you talked to uh, to Governor Abbott about this specifically? Well, you know, um, it's been, uh, Chris Salcedo and I have spoken about this too. We, a number of us, Rick, we're not the ones saying no to meetings with leadership to include Abbott, DeSantis and others. Uh, this is something that uh, I could sit down, just like we've done just now, and lay out the practical history of the authorities, how they were used, when they were used, how things were overlapped. Uh, it, this is it, literally this is not rocket science. It's just a matter of sitting down with a, with a, within a room, with a room of folks who are willing to listen and can comprehend and act with us to make it happen. So, uh, I think it's a great idea. 
uh, it can be done. Again, it's a matter of getting the right leaders together and establishing political will to do it. Uh, retired Lieutenant Colonel Tony Schaefer, President uh, Project Sentinel and London Center for Policy Research. I don't know how far back we go, 20 years or so, but it's always a pleasure. And, um, man, we're, we got to see if we can get you and Abbott together. That'd be great. Well, thanks, Rick. I always appreciate our conversations.